very good morning to all our viewers joining us live via YouTube. My name is Ng Zitek, Regional Anesthesia Trainee from Hospital Kuala Lumpur. And I would like to welcome you to this webinar organized by the Special Interest Group in Regional Anesthesia, Hospital Kuala Lumpur. This webinar is titled Abdominal Wall Blocks, The New Era. Before we begin, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to extend my gratitude to Toyo Ectec as well as GE for making this event a reality. I would also like to thank the Malaysian Society of Anesthesiologists as well as the College of Anesthesiologists for their continued support to the Special Interest Group in Regional Anesthesia. The use of ultrasound has popularized blocks like the transverse abdominis plane block and also the rectus sheath block. The use of ultrasound has also made way for the introduction of newer interfacial plane blocks, being the quadratus lumborum block and also the recent erector spinae plane blocks. Ultrasound guided interfacial plane block is fast gaining popularity among anesthesiologists to provide multimodal analgesia to patients undergoing abdominal surgery. Today, we will have uh, four esteemed panelists will show us uh, to, to go through the technique and tips in performing ultrasound-guided interfacial plane blocks. First up, we have Dr. Kairu, who will share with us the anatomical consideration for abdominal wall blocks. Next, we will have Dr. Nabila, who will deliver a talk on anterior versus posterior approach to abdominal wall blocks. What are our options? After that, there will be two live demonstrations of ultrasound scanning technique. Dr. Amir will be showing us the anterior approach, while Dr. Azrin will be showing us the posterior approach. This is followed by two pre-recorded blocks, one being the quadratus lumborum 3 block, the other one being the erector spinae plane block. Lastly, there will be a question and answer session. Just a reminder, feel free to send in your questions via the chat box. We will select your questions and then we will answer them either during the, at the end of the live demo or during the Q&A session. So without further ado, I would like to call upon Dr. Kairu for his, to deliver his first lecture on the anatomical consideration for abdominal wall blocks. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning everyone. I am Dr. Kairul from Hospital Kuala Lumpur. My topic today is anatomical considerations for abdominal wall blocks. I know this is a dry topic, however, understanding anatomy is fundamental to the rational practice of ultrasound-guided regional anesthesia and, of course, the success of our abdominal wall blocks. This is an overview of abdominal wall innovation by the uh, thoracolumbar spinal nerves. Spinal nerve give rise to dorsal rami and ventral rami, and then the ventral rami will become the intercostal nerves and further divided into anterior cutaneous branch and lateral cutaneous branch. Lateral cutaneous branch further divided into anterior division and posterior division. There is also sympathetic trunk ganglion, which arises from the dorsal root, dorsal root ganglion from the uh, spinal cord. The innovation of anterolateral abdominal wall by the somatic nervous system arises from the anterior rami of the thoracolumbar spinal nerve from T6 to L1. Branches from the anterior rami include the intercostal nerves from T6 to T11, the subcostal nerves at T12 and the iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerves at L1. The thoracolumbar nerves were found to travel as multiple mixed segmental nerves which branch and communicate widely within the neurovascular plane called the transversus abdominis plane. Such large branch communications were found anterolaterally uh, which is the intercostal plexus from T6 to T9, 
in plexuses that run with the deep circumflex iliac artery, which is the classical plexus tab from T10 to L1, and the deep inferior epigastric artery, which is the rectus sheet plexus from T6 to L1. Another consideration is the visceral innervation. The visceral, the viscera are innervated by the vagal nerve, which is the parasympathetic innervation, and the splenched nerve, which is the sympathetic innervation. The sensory part of the splenching nerves reach the spinal column at certain spinal segments. If postoperative or perioperative pain stimulations pre are predominantly transmitted via the autonomic nervous system, the choice of analgesic management are the first one, continuous central neural axial blockade, such as the intratical or epidural cocktail. We can perform thoracic paravertebral block or erector spinal plane block, as explained by Kendall in his meta-analysis. Quadratus lumbrum block, as explained by Carney in his review article in 2011. And lastly, oral or IV opioids. However, in this, in this webinar, we are, we are more focused towards the performance of regional anesthesia. Abdom, uh, abdominal wall blocks can be divided into posterior approaches and anterior approaches. For posterior approaches, we can perform erector spinal plane block or thoracic paravertebral block. We can perform this block posteriorly and it blocks both the ventral rami and the dorsal rami. For erector spinal plane block, we inject the LA in plane between the erector spinal muscle and transverse process. As for the thoracic paravertebral block, we inject the LA into the paravertebral space. So the coverage, uh, both this block covers the anteroabdominal part of the abdomen and also the posterior part of the abdomen. We also can perform QL block. There are three types of QL, QL1, QL2, and QL3. For QL3, we inject the LA in plane between the QL muscle and psoas muscle. It blocks the trans transmission from the ventral rami and thus, it covers the anterolateral part of the abdomen. For, post, for anterior approaches, we can perform tap block. There are two types of tap, classical tap and also the subcostal tap. Uh, this block, uh, we perform by injecting the uh, LA in plane between the internal oblique muscle and the transverse, transversus abdominis muscle. It blocks the intercostal nerve and thus it covers the anterolateral of the abdomen. We also can perform rectus sheet block. Uh, it blocks the anterior cutaneous nerves. We uh, deposit the LA between the uh, rectus abdominis muscles and the posterior rectus sheet. And thus, it only covers the anterior abdominal wall. Uh, in summary, uh, I have given you five options of regional anesthesia for uh, abdominal wall block. First one is the ESP. Second one is the thoracic paravertebral block. The third one is QL. Third is, uh, the fourth one is TAP. And the last one is rectus sheet block. These are my references and thank you.